yeah, I knew myself joining a coal mining company, but currently it's, it seems like I'm actually working for an energy company. From a cost point of view, it's cheaper, it's cleaner, not only looking at profits, but also the environment. Not that long ago, coal and renewable energy were worlds apart. But at South Africa's deepest underground coal mine, change is in the air. Suriti Resources' new Denmark colliery will be the first mine to integrate renewable energy from sister company Suriti Green's nearby Umbila Emoyeni wind power farm. We visited in Pumalanga province to find out more about how the mine could be the benchmark for the future of cleaner coal. Tabo, thank you for welcoming Mining in Dava to New Denmark Colliery. For context, let's start by explaining what is this mine all about. So we are an underground coal mine, currently the deepest uh, coal mine in South Africa. So we're part of the Seriti group uh, of, of the coal mines within the Pumalanga region. So history-wise, the mine uh, started in 1982. The coal that we produce, all of it goes to Tutuga Power Station, uh, which is ESCOM. Currently, our production output uh, for this uh, year, we're planning to produce 4.6 million tons. Obviously, with the intention to grow it a bit more to 5.1 uh, million tons uh, within the next couple of years. Headcount, we're looking at uh, just over 2,000 employees, of which uh, 1,300 of those is made up of permanent mine employees, and the difference is made up of contractors. We are mining using continuous miners. Uh, currently, we are running with the 11 sections. Uh, all of them development using Komatsu machines uh, with obviously shuttle cars and uh, roof bolters as part of our production cycles. So currently there is a bit of a, a integration that is going to be happening, uh, introducing the use of green energy. So let's just give a little bit of context just so that we're clear on, on what's sort of happening here. Sariti Green is a Sariti Resources sister company Correct. and they are building the Umbila wind farm. And that wind farm is ultimately going to supply green energy to the new Denmark colliery. What was the ultimate starting point or rationale behind doing this project? I mean, first and foremost, we all know it makes business sense. From a cost point of view, it's cheaper, it's cleaner. The whole purpose of the whole integration is how do we as a series to contribute to decarbonization? How do we reduce the, the carbon footprint by the construction of the Umbila Moyeni project, the wind farm? Uh, we will be supplying 75% of our electricity needs to New Denmark, will we'll see us cutting down on uh, close to 100,000 tons of uh, CO2 uh, annually. It's a big commitment from the company to say we are pro-green, uh, clean energy. As much as currently we are heavily reliant on, uh, on fossil fuels to operate the mine, but I think once the uptake and the project of Umbile Moyen is up and running, will see a significant contribution to, towards operating the mines in a much more cleaner way. From a cost perspective, I think uh, we, we're looking at savings of around 14.8 million rand. Over 20 years, we're looking at just over 480 million. So that's a very significant benefit to, to the organization. Amazing, and I think game-changing impacts for the coal mining industry in this area. I think one of the most important things I would like to understand today, Tabo, is the technical aspects of how this mine is ultimately going to receive Umbila's wind farm energy into this mine. So the Umbila Emoyeni Alpha Farm will have, uh, obviously, its own wind turbines with generators, where power will then be converted through the inverters uh, which are on site. Then the power will run through underground cables, to the on-site substation. The voltage will be then stepped up to, from 33 kV to 132 kV. And at this point, uh, from the substation, that's where the interface between ESCOM as well as Seriti Green will start. And that's where now all the, the power, the electricity being generated can then be metered by both parties to say how much is going into, into the grid. The energy will then move through the overhead power lines to the main transmission substation where there's a further now bumping up of the voltage to around 400 kV, at the, which point then the electricity is then ready for national distribution into the entire ESCOM power grid. And how does it work in terms of from the grid to the mine? So it's, it's quite important for people to understand that we will not be getting electricity directly from the Umbila wind farm. So there will be a willing agreement. So for instance, 
if New Denmark at a point in time uses two gigawatt hours of electricity, that will be checked and, and monitored. And at the same time, 1.5 gigawatt hours were generated by the wind farm. It will be seen then as the 1.5 that was used by New Denmark Colliery will be considered as green energy, clean energy. Then the remainder, which is the 0 0.5, will be considered as non-clean energy, which then will be then built via the ESCOM current tariff system. And then the 1.5, through the wheeling agreement between Seriti Green and Seriti Power, will then be built to Seriti Power uh, operations. Okay, so even though it doesn't necessarily come directly, it can very much be monitored that it is green energy that is feeding the mine ultimately. 100%. Tabo, mining in itself is still a very energy intensive business and you've referred to production increases. What does your future at New Denmark look like and how might that impact ultimately on your energy requirements? So I think that the future is further expansion for the mine. Various projects are coming online. Uh, one will be sinking a new shaft closer to the central shaft reserves. That will require much more energy. Number two, we're in the process of establishing a water treatment plant plus a beneficiation plant. These three projects uh, combined will require more energy. So the introduction of additional energy from Seriti Green will assist us in making sure that these projects are actually uh, feasible. The lifespan of the mine uh, will take us up until 2053. So there is a future for the workforce. There is a future uh, of uh, energy security to ESCOM. Yeah. Importantly, timelines. When does this project kick in? We've got three wind turbines that are already up. Uh, the phase one will be constitute of 25, and that should be ready by July 2026. Uh, from there onwards, by August 2027, we should see the rest of the wind turbines around 132 up and running. How do the communities and the workforce feel about this project? It brings a lot of development for the surrounding communities, uh, skills, um, it brings employment, uh, so it means it will then start to drive the local economy for, for particularly the areas around Mohenson and, and, and Bethal. So it's, it's, it's quite a positive change. It brings hope also for the employees. I think they're, they're very happy to see that a company like Seriti continues to invest in their community as much as they've given them employment, but they're also doing the same for their fellow brothers and sisters back at home. It's energy security, not only for New Denmark, but for South Africa, a sustainable electricity into the grid. I think they appreciate it from that aspect as well. This project also means a lot for you. Yeah, for me, it's, it's quite interesting because one, like when I joined Seriti, I knew myself joining a coal mining company, but currently it's, it seems like I'm actually working for an energy company. So seeing the integration come to life, I think it will be very interesting, knowing that I'll be one of the first beneficiaries, not only within the organization, but in the country as well. And so it will be an interesting change for me, uh, for my career as well. Tabo, thanks so much for having us. For more insights, see you at Mining in Darbo.